Today, the body of Prime Minister Mele Zanawi arrived in Ethiopia from Brussels. No one's sure yet how he died, but you know, that's part of the secrecy which shrouded his authoritarian rule. The story matters to America because Ethiopia's dictator was an ally in the fight against al Qaeda in Somalia. Thanks to that allegiance, the U.S. looked the other way on things like how the Zanawi regime jailed opposition leaders and journalists and led Ethiopia to a ranking of 174 out of 187 countries in the Human Development Index. That measures human rights. We saw what an African police state looked like when I was in Ethiopia last month. At the airport, it took an hour to clear customs, not because of lines, but because of checks and questioning. Officials tried multiple times to take us to government cars so they'd know where we went, and they only relented after forcing us to leave hundreds of thousands of dollars of TV gear in the airport. Outside the airport, we saw, this is the outside of the airport, you see nothing. Inside was empty. Outside was a crowd. Why, we asked? Well, they said, because we're not allowed in to greet our arriving families and friends. The police are worried about unrest, so the people stand outside in the rain. Another visual that ties some of this together is this photo. This is myself and our cameraman Christian next to a Lada. Those are the ancient Russian cars, which are still the taxi cab of choice in Addis Ababa, left over from when Ethiopia was a socialist ally of the USSR. Maybe that's why the United States is so proud of winning Ethiopia over as an ally. It's proof we won the Cold War. But despite supporting a regime that deprived its nation of a free press, the United States isn't reaping the benefits you might expect. These guys are. These are Chinese businessmen in the airport. They are everywhere. China is the biggest investor in Ethiopia. That's right. They were everywhere. Here's the bottom line. The U.S. gives about a billion dollars a year in aid to a dictator and looks the other way on human rights. And China gets the prize. That's kind of ugly, no matter how you look at it.